Greetings to the European Intersex Forum at Douarnenez. This is an excellent opportunity to highlight the human rights challenges faced by intersex people. I'm pleased that you will be discussing these questions together with activists, politicians, health professionals, and academic experts. We need a wide debate to raise awareness of the problems and to seek solutions. Most Europeans are unaware of the lives of intersex people. The supposed dichotomy of sex and gender and the corresponding medical norms have resulted in routine medical and surgical interventions on intersex children. This has often happened without the free and informed consent of the people concerned. The secrecy and shame surrounding intersex bodies has permitted the perpetuation of such practices, while the human rights issues at stake remained unaddressed. Respect for the rights of children is one of the core concerns. This is why I published an issue paper on human rights and intersex people last month. The paper traces the steps already taken towards understanding and responding to the situation of intersex people from a human rights perspective. It includes global best practices. In Europe, the Maltese Gender Identity, Gender Expression, and Sex Characteristics Act, adopted in April, constitutes a milestone in the recognition of intersex people. It provides specific protection to intersex people against discrimination and hate crimes. It also prohibits so-called normalizing medical treatment without the consent of the per people concerned, and it provides flexible procedures for legal gender recognition. My rec recommendations in the issue paper urge European governments to follow the Maltese example. We have to react to inhumane medical practices, discrimination, hate crimes, and obstacles in the legal recognition of intersex people. Access to medical records and justice is a further concern. We have to involve national authorities, human rights structures, intersex activists, and medical professionals in responding to the serious issues which have been identified. Professional standards, legal safeguards, and judicial control should be reinforced to ensure human rights compliance. I'm convinced that now there's sufficient momentum to make a fresh start and to put the human rights challenges of inter intersex people firmly on the European agenda. I'm pleased that the civil society organizations representing intersex persons are becoming stronger and more vocal. Many medical professionals are also reviewing their practices. The knowledge base is improving, and now we have the tools to raise awareness and to advocate a rights-based agenda. Now it's a turn of governments to listen to these messages and take action to remedy un this unacceptable situation, which can no longer be ignored. I wish you the best in your discussions and remain your ally in advancing this agenda.